VR dials are interactive static meshes that can rotate on an axis of your choice to drive some kind of functionality, whatever it is you want to set up. I've got two main modes of just free flowing, like this volume knob here, or snap angles on this mode selector for this radio. If I grab it and twist my controller, it'll switch between the different modes. And here with the volume, I can increase it and decrease it. It follows how quick and slow I'm doing it. So let's quickly uh, jump to the settings of the VR dial to figure out how we can set them up to use them for our own use case. So what I've got here is a VR dial set up with the current angle shown at the top. As I move it around, it'll update to tell me what the current angle is. You can use that to drive whatever logic you want. But notice uh, the way it's set up right now, I'm only going to get between 0 and 360, which are the different degrees that I'm cycling through as I rotate the dial. So if we start digging into the settings here, you can see the first two are clockwise max and counterclockwise max dial angle. Right now they're both set to 180. And they do overlap here, so you can see I'm allowed to go past 180 through all 360 degrees on the dial. But if I set this to something like 75 for the clockwise, I'm only going to be able to now go down to 75 degrees here, traveling clockwise. And for counterclockwise, now that, that 180 is actually stopping me. You can see it's stopping me here, so I can't go anywhere between those two values now. Set those back. Use rollover is what will allow you to go past the 0 and 360 degrees on the dial. So if I keep going to 180, I forgot to change that to the higher value. But you can see now that the current angle goes into the negatives instead of into a positive to 180. And if I turn use rollover off, it goes back to that 300. But with rollover, it travels into negative values when rotated counterclockwise. And as long as we're allowed to keep it going here, I can go now up to negative 500. You can pretty much set these values to whatever you like. And it'll allow you to keep going through the different angles so the dial isn't limited to just giving you a 0 to 360 angle. Let's reset that. So the next setting here is dial uses angle snap. So if I enable that now, it's going to start using these uh, snap angle increment and snap angle threshold to control how operating this dial works. So now I'm going to 45, 90, and it's snapping in between the two angles. I'm not getting that free movement anymore, and the current angle isn't cycling through any of the angles in between the snap points. With both of them set to 45, it only gives me, um, it's also worth noting that the 360 to 0 it swaps between these two really easily. So be aware of that if you're uh, needing those values in your code. And you can also see it's firing this event on dial hit angle, and that tells me what angle has been hit as well. So you can use that event to fire whatever logic you like. That's how I'm using it on the radio over there to switch between the different modes uh, as it hits the different angles. So snap angle increment here, that's actually what angle it's going to snap to. So right now it's going to go every 45 degrees. If we set to something else, it'll snap in between those. Notice how now I have a little bit of free play because I didn't mess with the threshold settings at all. So that's what those are for. Uh, you've got the threshold meeting or exceeding what your increment is then you're only going to see the change uh, when you get far enough to actually move the controller into the next snap angle increment. If the threshold is lower than that increment, you're going to see some play in between. So you can get some nice feeling snapping where you get a little bit of movement and then it snaps into place. So if you're looking for that kind of movement, mess with those values to get it to feel how you want. Let's go ahead and reset all that real quick. Now dial use angle snap list. This setting requires you to have dial angle snap still set. And this lets you create a list of angles to snap to. 
You can already see I filled in some. You can have as many as you like, negative or positive values. And note that this does disable the snap angle increment and snap angle threshold values. It allows you to set up exact angles for where you want the dial to snap into. Here, the first one I have is negative 90, then 75, 200, and 500. Since I don't have use rollover enabled, I'm actually not going to be able to use that negative 90. It won't let me. The dial is only giving me the 0 to 360 angles with that turned off. So if I try now and go for that first 75, and then I try to go to the negative 90, you can see it freaks out and just gives me the 200. So if you set these up, uh, set them away that it's not too far away from each different angle, so you don't end up getting weird, um, weird movement. But if you want to use negative values, just enable the use rollover, and now I can go ahead and get into that negative 90. Let's turn all that off now. Rotation scaler gives you access to be able to say, all right, now, um, right now, if I mess with this angle, it's pretty much going to follow where my controller is, one to one. If I set that to something lower, like 0.5, now it's going to essentially be half of what I'm putting in with my controller. So it's going to feel like it takes more effort. See how my controller is getting further away, but the dial is still rotating. Just feels like it takes a lot more to move this dial now. because it's taking my input here and then scaling it down. It gives me the opposite result if I go higher, of course. So it's a two. Essentially, it's going to move about twice as much as my controller does. Keep in mind, though, that uh, if you see I'm at the center here of the dial's rotation axis, and that makes it really easy to start going through all the angles extremely quickly. So depending on what you're using to use this dial for, you might want to lock the player's hands to the outside of the dial. But that rotation scaler gives you the access to kind of change how much input it takes from the user to be able to actually rotate the dial. Dial rotation axis, uh, again, it's something cool you can change on the fly. Right now it's on the Z axis of the static mesh. So I'm rotating it on its Z axis. And if I change it to the X axis and move it, see it moves along that now. Down to Y. Something else worth noting here is I put it like this here and then change it to, say, the z-axis. It's going to snap back to where it was initially. Show that again with the x-axis here. Pull it down, then back to z. When I grab it, it's going to move right back to its initial location. It's because I'm not resetting what the dial thinks is its initial rotation and position. That's what this function is for, the reset initial location that's built into the VR dial itself. We have to do here is let's say I move it again on the X axis and then I reset the initial location. And then I change it over to Z and rotate. It's not going to snap back and it's going to say, all right, this is my new starting location. It's also going to reset the current angle to zero when you fire that function. Go ahead and put that back. So the direct hand rotation, enabling this gives you a choice between X, Y, and Z on the user's controller. So I'm grabbing the dial here and rotating it. Oh, let me change that back to the Z axis. Now it's actually my controller's, uh, it's not my controller's position, it's my rotation on the controller that's adjusting the dial. So that's X. Here's Y. And then Z. So the dial is not looking at my controller's position, just the rotation when I grab it. Lerping. Uh, if you want the dial to actually automatically return to zero. So yeah, and right now when I grab it and I let it go, it'll just stay where it is. Lerping will have it move back from the current angle back to zero. So I'll set that to true here. Notice I'm at 159 now. And when I activate it, uh, it didn't actually move back, even though I just activated it, turned lerping on. So do know that if you're doing it runtime, it only activates when you actually release the dial. So you're going to have to call that manually if you want to have that happen without the user's intervention. 
It'll also fire this on dial finished uh, lerping. You can run whatever logic you want after that. And you can also turn off uh, whether or not you want the events on the angle, any other events to happen during the lerp. So if I had something to activate there where it said 54, you can have it to false so the lerping back won't fire. And the dial return speed is just how fast it's going to come back to this. Uh, right now it's at 800. It's also worth noting that the use rollover enabled, it's going to lerp in that direction that's shortest back to zero, regardless of the current angle. But if you use rollover and go negative, let me increase the angle limits a layer here. So through to 475, it'll go back through the negative values and then back to its initial position of zero. It won't look to just get to the top. It's actually going to angle zero. So that's what 800 looks like. You can go much higher than that if you need to. Something lower, like about, I think 100 is the lowest I have on here. But you can go way lower than that. That's what that looks like there. Just mess around with that value to get it to where you want. Aside from that, we've also got some other options as well here. So it doesn't actually have to be just the player's controller that's changing the angle on the dial. You can fire this event that's a built-in SG function to add dial angle. Right now it's adding 25. Every time you hit it, it'll add 25. Uh, it's still going to respect all the different settings that you have, all the limits. Same thing with set dial angle. That's going to set it to a predetermined angle that you tell it to. And of course, we got the reset dial. So now it changes where it believes it should belong for zero. All right, let's jump out of the headset and talk about how you can go about setting up a VR dial for yourself really quick. Okay, so let's cover uh, uh, just two different options here. Let's say you already had a blueprint like this radio here uh, that you wanted to add a dial to, like let's say a power on and off switch. You can just come up here to add component all the way down, we've got all of our different VR expansion plugin stuff here, and we've got the VR dial. I get to add that in here, choose whatever static mesh I wanted to have it to have, place it wherever I want it to, let's make it smaller. And then I would go about uh, getting into these settings here that we looked at and changing it to whatever I want. Let's say this would be a power switch, right? So this would be just uh, two different snap angles I would want to go in between. Let's say 0 and uh, 90. So I'd only want it to be able to go through 90. So clockwise, don't need anything in the counterclockwise. And I want to do direct hand rotation on the x-axis, that's right. Then what this would actually, this is already done. So I would come in here and be able to, whoa, just grab that and take it from the current zero, 90 degrees, it would just snap to that, boom, I have a quick on off switch. Another thing you could do is if I wanted to have a bunch of uh, different on off switches, I could make a component. Based on the VR dial component, we'll just call it like on off dial, and then do the same thing where I'm setting the static mesh. You can set up all of your different uh, VR dial options. And then what I would do is, let's say I had a radio and I had a TV and I had a bunch of other different uh, blueprints that were totally different. Uh, I wouldn't have to go through and do the settings every single time. I would just come up here, add component. And you can see I have my BP on off dial that I just made. I would pop that in here and it's our, it would already have all those different settings set up for me. So I wouldn't have to build them again. And I can, if I want to make any changes, you just make them once in this component, and then you put them onto whatever you want to use them with.